so powerful, so uncompromising, and we can see at the same time he's in complete ecstasy. He's enjoying himself so much. So Shri Gurude explained that, yes, our Shri Prabhupada is a world preacher. He spread the glories of the holy name. He introduced Bhagavad Gita, Shiva Bhagavatam, Chitan Charitamrita everywhere. He introduced four regulated principles, he introduced Vaishnav culture. But he, Gurudev said, you can know how high is the mountain, but you know how deep is the mountain. So while doing this, our, my Guru Maharaj, he's all the time situated at the Lotus Feet of Radha and Krishna in the spiritual world. So he's completely transcendental in his practice, in his preaching, everything, and at the same time completely human. Very loving, very attentive to human details everywhere. Every day he was writing so many letters, receiving so many letters. Very, very attentive to the welfare, spiritual welfare, material welfare also of his uh, devotees. He wrote the one, he said one devotee, he was uh, officiating in a marriage. He said, sannyasis don't marry their disciples. And arrange for the marriage of the disciples. But he said, I'm doing. He said, I've come to make you happy. Happy in this world, happy in the next world. Like our Srila Gurudev also. He was like a flood of love. Loved everybody. And especially his devotees. And therefore his disciples, they had so much nishta for Srila Prabhupada. Many years after he left, they were coming to Srila Gurudev in Madhura. Oh, Maharaji, I've been chanting for so many years, 15 years I've been chanting Holy Name, but I don't have any taste. Srila Gurudev was amazed. He said to his disciples, just see, 15 years chanting without any taste, how can anyone do that? He said, this is Guru Nishtha. You should have Guru Nishtha to your Gurudev, as they have. This is Shiva Prabhupada's inspiration. He inspired his devotees to do what is completely impossible. He converted hippies into happies, had them shaved up, chanting Hare Krishna, traveling all over the planet, distributing millions of books, and actually following Vaishnava culture. It was an astounding, unprecedented achievement. He was born in a family of aristocratic number of cloth merchants. His father every night, he was, actually his father was just worshipping most of the time. He did a little work. In the evening when he left the cloth shop, he put a bowl of rice out so the rats would eat the rice and not the cloth. Very, very humane. He didn't use uh, rat, rat traps. He fed them instead of killing them. A very beautiful uh, attitude. When he was very, very young, he used to stare at the deities for hours on end. He introduced Rath Yatra. Uh, when he was just a young child, crying, I want a Rathka, I want a Rathka. And then he himself, he organized Rath Yatra and distributed Prashadam. His father was a pure devotee, Gormo Hande. Taught him Radanga, didn't send him to the West to become a lawyer because he said he'd become degraded. And his father very kindly chose an unattractive wife so that Srila Prabhupada wouldn't become too attractive and he could easily become renounced at the, at the end. Very amazing father. So, we heard this morning, he met his spiritual master, Srila Saraswati Prabhupada. He only had two weeks association with Srila Prabhupada. But Prabhupada, from the beginning, he recognized him. He said, yes, I recognized him. He hears nicely, and then later he will speak nicely. So Srila Saraswati Prabhupada marked him that he was right at the very beginning, Prabhupada offered the basis is that the Lotus Feet of this holy person he didn't know. And before he got up, Saraswati Prabhupada said, You should go to the West and you should preach in English. My Guru Maharaj never forgot this. Right from the beginning, Saraswati Prabhupada marked him. They both understood that he was going to go to the West. He was going to make a huge introduction of Vaishnava culture in the West. How he would do it, it wasn't clear. The very last letter Saraswati Prabhupada wrote to him. He said, you can repeat this instruction, you go to the West, you preach in English. 
I'm fully confident you'll make a very good preacher. That's it. No more direction. You've got to do this way, this way, this way. Completely, he was putting in the hands of Krishna. So, uh, other devotees, they told Sarasthi Prabhupada, oh, he's a good devotee, he should move into the map. Prabhupada said, no, leave him alone. In time, he will do something wonderful. So later, she starts the Prabhupada left. Uh, Prabhupada, my Guru Maharaj, had trouble with his family. One day he came home, his wife used to like drinking tea. Already Prabhupada, the business had failed. So his wife liked drinking tea. One time Prabhupada came home, he said, where's my Srimad Bhagavatam? She said, oh, I need some biscuits to drink tea with. So we didn't have any money, so I sold Shima Bhagavatam. Prabhupada said, oh, if you had to choose between tea and me, which would you choose? She said, tea, probably. A few days later, he left. He went to Mathura. And there, we heard this morning how uh, our Gurudev forcibly brought him to the mark, and then Srila Bhakti Brigham Kishi Goswami Maharaj, he came, and our Gurudev insisted to Srila Param Gurudev and all of Haibabu, she thanked Sanyas. Then there was a discussion, and in the end, Prabhupada said, okay, if Sanat Prabhu takes Sanyas, then I'll take Sanyas. Sanat Prabhu, that time he was 90 years old. So, what? He takes Sanyas, I'm the aura. If a, if a Bhagavad takes Sanyas, then I'll take Sanyas. So next day it was settled. After that, Srila Prabhupada, uh, he went, went here and there. He said he had so much trouble with his godfathers. He was oppressed, suppressed, depressed. But he was never discouraged. Anyway, he carried on with his determination. He printed Shiva Bhagavatam, he went on board Jaladuka, and he went to America. And there, <laughs> in a completely alien culture, he was sitting on this ship, Jaladur, and looking at the skyline and seeing no trace of any culture there, only passion and ignorance, not even goodness. Previously, he said these people are living like animals. Uh, so, but all the time he was clear about his mission. On the one hand, he said, it's very, it's very uncomfortable for me here. He spent a whole year struggling by himself. Sometimes no money. He brought about $20 with him. Sometimes no money. In his diary, you can read. No money? Pass it. In. Another time, he was putting advertisements for his classes. Sometimes people came, sometimes people didn't come. One time he wrote, Class, I gave a lecture. Nobody came, only me and tape recorder. He bought the tape recorder. So three days, he gave class with his tape recorder. And those classes, they began the introduction to Bhagavad Gita as it is. So he said, we started in a helpless way, in a hopeless way, on the day of the appearance of his Guru Maharaj. He said, who knew? There would be all these devotees, all these books, all these temples, farms, Gurukul, who knew? This is all Krishna's mercy. So like this morning we heard and how he made a piece open, like Krishna's flute. And therefore Krishna had to support him. So Prabhupada, he distributed millions of books. He got in the Guinness Book of Records, the most prolific author. Millions of books were distributed. One time one devotee, uh, somebody, he was approaching someone in a car, uh, parking lot, car park. So this person said, he was in Sweden actually, he said, is there any parking lot in the whole of Sweden where you devotees aren't there? A devotee said, maybe not, but if you know one, please tell us, we'll go. The millions of books, temples, farms, just like in his vision, before he started in New York City. He was talking to one gentleman in the park. An old man, Indian gentleman with nice, funny pointy shoes. And he said, we have temples, we have farms, we have schools. I was looking at him, he said, you know, you don't look like somebody who's got temples and books and farms and schools. Brother said, 
Only time separates us. So he was so fixed in his vision. Hmm. He also introduced scientific preaching. So this is Gurley said. This is the height of the mountain. But the depths of the mountain was actually he wanted to preach pure Shula Bhakti, spontaneous devotional service, Braj Bhakti. Unfortunately, we weren't ready. But he pointed the way. Especially in nectar instruction. Especially in fourth chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita Hari Lila. He's explaining what is Braj Bhakti. He's explaining that spontaneous Braj Bhakti is superior to regulated Bhakti. This is his actual mission. But we weren't ready. But he explained what it was so that when later we met with a sadhu, when we met with a pure devotee who would explain these points in detail, then we could understand from Srila Prabhupada's books, we could understand from Srila Prabhupada's instructions that yes, this is the person with whom we have to associate. This is the person with whom we have to hear in order to understand Srila Prabhupada's mission. Srila Gurudev explained to us, he explained to me what is Prabhupada's mission. He even explained what is Prabhupada's name. In his car, they thought, they still think, that his name is Bhakti Vedanta. Actually, his name is Swami Maharaj. I didn't know until I met Gurudev. Even the name of my spiritual master. What is his transcendental position? That he explained in many places in his books. For example, a Kurukshetra, Shimati Radhika, met with Krishna. Krishna told her, the gopis are my very life. And you are the life of my life. You, Shimati Radhika. Jiva Nair Jiva, you're the life of my life. And Prabhupada writes in his commentary there. From this statement of Srimati Radharani, uh, from this statement of Krishna, we can understand that Srimati Radharani is the queen of Vrindavan, and Krishna is simply her decoration. So who can write this? No cowherd boy can write this. Because they don't see Radha and Krishna together. Even Manu Manga, he may see Radha and Krishna together, but he won't think that Krishna is the decoration of Srimadhi Radhika. He'll always be on Krishna's side. Mother has shown her formally, she never sees them together. Chandravati's party, they're not going to say that Krishna is the decoration of Srimadhi Radhika. Only Gopi in Srimadhi Radhika's group, she can say like that. So he preached, he, but there's one thing missing, he said, training for my devotees. In, uh, our God Sister Buddha Prakriti's book, Srila Prabhupada, everybody's friend. Person after person after person, he was praying to them, begging them, you please train my disciples. I didn't have time. Please train my disciples. Uh, so finally, he was coming to the end of his life. Mm. He gave up eating, gave up everything. He came to Krishna Bhadra Monday. He was simply a skeleton. Physically, a skeleton covered with skin. And he, when they brought him to Krishna Balaramandi, he said, I've already given up mating and defending. And now I'm giving up eating and sleeping also. He gave up sleeping. He didn't eat for months. Sleeping not also. He was lying on the bed to the very last breath. He was giving himself in preaching, giving himself in, looking after his devotees. Right at the end, he was taking Srimad Bhagavatam. His voice was so soft, you could hardly be heard, but still, every day, every day, uh, translating to Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Srila Prabhupada, he preached very broadly, and also in his books, his mood is very deep. And he prepared us, he said that, uh, Srila Gurudev said that, Diksha Guru is so powerful that he can appear as Shiksha Guru. One time I asked Chila Gurudev that who gave me Diksha? Because when I, I received by a tape recorder this mantras, Prabhupada, they gave me Prabhupada's voice on the recorder, but no effect, frankly speaking. I was repeating the mantras, no effect, repeating the sound. And then later when I heard from Chila Gurudev, Deep difference, like night and day. So I asked him, who gave you Diksha? You said there's so many Diksha to Shiksha Gurus. Who gave me Diksha? You gave me, or my Guru Maharaj gave me. So he said, he gave you, but through me. So I was satisfied. 
Jinshu Guru is so powerful, he can appear as Shinshu Guru. So I'm so grateful that I could meet with such a great soul, utterly amazing personality as my Shri Prabhupada. And then that he very kindly led me to the Lotus Tea of such a powerful transcendental personality as our Shri Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Guru Dev. And I pray today on the disappearance of my Holy Master that he'll very kindly uh, make known to me his service, uh, my service to him, both here and in the spiritual world. And he'll kindly give me the power to carry that out. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna is a live transmission in Hindi on 107 FM. So, frequency, you can radio you radio One of our senior Vaishnavas, who hasn't taken teacher from Sri Prabhupada, but he came to the Krishna Consciousness Movement just after the disappearance of Sri Prabhupada, one of our uh, illustrious sannyasi preachers, Bhaktivedanta Nandi Maharaj, come and to glorify Sri Prabhupada. Shilaburi describes so many qualities 
of Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Pranam Swami. But a prominent quality was his simplicity. That place of the heart is a very simple place, ultimately. So that simple nature of his was so appealing to so many people. He touched so many hearts in so many different areas. So this powerful quality was sufficient to cut through so much um, contamination in the Western world. Previously, three personalities had come to the West from the Gaudiya mission. Srila Bhakti Kridai Bon Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pradeep Tirtha Maharaj, and Srila Bhakti Saram Goswami Maharaj. These three had come previously. And yet they hadn't made a significant impression on the Western consciousness. They had preached particularly to the intellectual class. They hadn't touched the um, majority of the younger people. They hadn't reached out that way. So unfortunately they, they hadn't met with so much success. But we see the style that Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he came, painless practically, and he went to the lowest people, the hippies, they were just often dirty, they didn't know how to properly behave in any sort of way, but they were desperate, they were actually looking, they were seeking, and he showed them love, he showed them by his service to them, he would cook for them, he would clean for them, he would serve them, this touched their hearts so much. We can read in his biography how he would cook these Sunday love feasts and how he would serve himself, how he would clean up afterwards. So by doing all these endearing activities, he captured the hearts of so many young people in New York originally, as we were hearing from Shamarani Didi this morning. And then he went to Golden Gate Park and by the power of this Hare Krishna mantra, as we've just been hearing by Pujama Devi Maharaj, that just simply by this power of the mantra, he was able to attract so many people to coming to listen to him. First of all, he was purifying them by the chanting, and then he was injecting them with very simple philosophy initially, and then gradually, gradually increasing their awareness of these high spiritual truths. His great towering quality was that he would bring the highest conceptions down to the most simple language in order to impress in the hearts of all those people. And very, very quickly, just in a few short years, we've heard, we know, that this garland of the Hare Krishna mantra wrapped itself around this planet. People used to say they'd get on a plane in New York and they'd see the Hare Krishna devotees chanting. They'd get off in Paris and still they'd be chanting there. They'd go to Rome and they'd be chanting there. They'd fly to New York, uh, to Tokyo and they'd be chanting there. Everywhere, all across the planet, this holy name was being vibrated, simply being caused by this one personality. As we saw in the film tonight, how expert he was in dealing with so many varieties of individuals. Sometimes very envious people would come, and yet somehow in a very amicable, friendly, loving way, he would melt that person. He would endear that person. So what extraordinary qualities of affection and love did this individual hold? Was he empowered by? And we see in his lifestyle, he wasn't active in the Gaudiya Mark most of his life. He was actually living as a Grihasta for many, many years. And he would travel and he would sell his uh, uh, medicine, his, his pharmaceutical products. And he, on a train, when you travel in India, what do you do? You talk to people. So he was very much um, able to empathize with so many individuals in so many ways. So this loving nature of his is what captured people. It wasn't necessarily his erudition. It wasn't necessarily the uh, way that he uh, introduced the different culture, but ultimately it was his 
supreme, loving personality. Sometimes now we can meet devotees who have actually left Krishna conscious practices for so many years, but you mention the name Prabhupada, immediately they become enlivened, and immediately they become attractive again to listen, to hear these truths. So, we see that this line from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? What is the nature of this incarnation? He is Audarya Shakti. He is like previously Krishna came 5,000 years ago, but Krishna was annihilating the demons. But what was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doing? He is turning the demons into devotees. This is a dasana dasana. This is making the impossible possible. He turned himself Jagai Mada. This was extraordinary that these sinful wretches could come and take shelter of Nityananda and Mahaprabhu. So this is the quality that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself was exhibiting. And our Bhakti Vinotapo, he was exhibiting these same qualities all the way through our life from Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Naratam, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Sananda Saraswati, and our beloved Srila Bhakti Purgyam Kesha Parma, all are exhibiting these same utterly merciful, loving, compassionate, sweet qualities. Prabhupada wanted his society to become the friend of everybody. But how to do that? This is very difficult. The devotion, devotional um, philosophy is going upstream, away from the material inclination to enjoy in this world. How to convince people that actually this is not in their best interest? How to convince people that the best interest is with their soul's value in their relationship with the Lord, with their relationship with the Lord's Parikas, with the Supreme Shimati Radharani? How to convince the world of this? So Srila Prabhupada was so expert in his own personality, his own character, so loving. We read as Nemi Pushpad, Nemi Maharaj has described this beautiful book by uh, Mula Prakriti. She wrote um, a loving well wisher. A friend to all. And we see before he even came to the West, there are so many stories in this book. One story in particular struck me that one person at Radha Damodar, they would come regularly and beg Prabhupada, oh, please can we sweep your rooms for you? Prabhupada would say, no, no. And he would always do it himself. And one day, as he was leaving for his bath in Jamuna, this person again was asking him, please can I sweep your room? And Prabhupada said at this time, okay, you may do. Then he went to take his bath in Jamuna, and when he returned, he just stood in the doorway, and this person described that as he was sweeping, he suddenly saw Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet right in front of him, and they weren't moving, and he was looking intently at something. And the sweeper, he looked up, and he saw that Prabhupada was looking at all the spiders that were running on the floor looking for some sort of shelter, because he had swept all the cobwebs out of the ceiling and from the walls. And Prabhupada just looked at him and said, what have you done? This is their home also. So Prabhupada was very much caring even for these living entities, for all living entities. And when Mula Prakriti was hearing this narration from this Brijavasi, she happened to look around the room of this Brijavasi and she saw it was loaded with, with uh, spiderwebs that he hadn't swept his own, he hadn't cleaned the spiderwebs from his own room. He was so touched by this example of Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada's examples, the devotees can tell stories forever. Forever we can hear the stories of his kindness, of his gentility, of his mystical opulences. Also he utilized, he often is described as when he was descending from an airplane as this huge light that devotees would have this vision of. He had to come with this mood of Aishwarya to establish his nature, to establish the nature of the Supreme Lord of his own beloved Sri Krishna. He wanted originally to take us to the park in New York and he wanted to show us the Rasvila pastimes. But first, he had to clean up our material habits, our acts. So very carefully, he was training us 
Some stories are remarkable that, as we've heard before this evening, that many devotees, they would be traveling far away from their temples, and still at four o'clock in the morning they would rise, take ice cold baths, etc., to fulfill the order of this personality. Who is such a personality that they can, can take people's hearts and enliven them in such a way and bring them closer to the Lord? How remarkable, how amazing. His glories will live on forever. It said that Vaishnavas, they never die. In sound, they live forever. Their glories go eternally through. So on this very sacred day, we are so grateful. Normally, personally, I have never had an opportunity in this sangha to glorify Shiva Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. There has always been so many uh, Prabhupada direct Diksha disciples. But by some fortune this evening, I've been able to say a few words in honor. I feel him so deeply every single day and almost every moment of my life. I feel his presence in my life. And I never met him. So how remarkable is that personality that he could affect us in such a significant way to keep us close just by him giving us the Srimad Bhagavatam, him giving us the Chaitanya Charitamrita, him giving us Upadesha Amrita, in giving us the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. This was the war. Pridai Bhan Maharaj, he translated it. Srila Bhakti Nanda Swami Prabhupada would encourage us to also take that translation. So in all areas of our lives, Srila Prabhupada has brought us closer. And of course, by being introduced ultimately to our beloved Srila Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Nanda Narayana Goswami Maharaj, then, uh, basically, we became to know who was really Shiva Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Before I met Shiva Gurudev, I didn't really know who was Shiva Prabhupada. But now, through the mercy of Shiva Gurudev, I come to understand actually his greatness, his qualities. What is the quality of a Vaishnava? What is his nishta? What is his Ratha nishta? What is his nishta to that Madhurya Dharma? Previously, all I had understood was his greatness. But then, through the mercy of Bhaktivedanta Shiva Narayan Goswami Maharaj, I understood his real sweetness as the eternal servant of Srimati Radhika. So on this day, I'm expressing my gratitude from the core of my heart for having the great fortune to have been introduced and connected with his teachings from 1979 until I came to Shiva Gurudev in the early 90s. And they have sustained me and will continue to sustain me as long as I am in this body and hopefully in future births. So I'm thanking very much for all of his mercy and beg on this day that his sweetness will always be manifest close in my heart. Shiva Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Kija. Shiva Bhakti Vedanta one of our um, second generation Vaishnavas who um, had the opportunity to actually meet Shiva Prabhupada in his childhood and to grow up in the Krishna consciousness movement and then to come to the lotus feet of our Shiva Gurudev and meet Shiva Prabhupada within Shiva Gurudev and then to take the mercy of Gurudev and Travel throughout the world distributing this mercy. That is our uh, Srimad Kishori Mohan Prabhu to come and glorify Shiva Prabhupada.
memory of this life. I was very young, maybe two and a half or three years old. It was the last time I should have brought came to Los Angeles. And my first memory is receiving a cookie from his hand. I remember him smiling very big, and I remember all of the devotees around being so excited, and some were even a little jealous of the children because we got to receive cookies from him. My mother brought me to see him, and I still remember the flavor of the cookies. My second memory was his disappearance day. That happened when I was about three and a half, and I remember it so vividly because for a child to see hundreds and hundreds of adult, grown-up devotees crying, collapsing, sitting in corners, completely unable to do anything. I remember the flags up in the temple. It looked like a festival, but everyone was white, pale, and completely destroyed. It was the most horrific thing. For a child to see that kind of heartbreak, and all of the senior or the grown-up questions, the loss of the association of Sri Guru. And only recently was I able to get an idea of the pain in their heart. My whole life growing up, Srila Prabhupada, that name was our everything. We didn't know anything else. The children were raised as the baby godbrothers of the big ones. So, Padmanabha Maharaj, my father, all these devotees were there, and I was a little kid, and they, were, they only looked at us, oh, you were brought to this world for the purpose to serve his mission. Your purpose is to preach the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and this was fed into our minds and into our hearts from our very birth. And so they endeavored their best. Sometimes it wasn't the best um, outcome, but anyway, their endeavor was to please Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada inspired this mood in all of the hearts of his disciples. I think it was Srila Shramar, he said that Srila Prabhupada extracted an unprecedented amount of Guru Nishta in his disciples that we have not seen ever before. This kind of dedication. I know that he inspired all of his devotees. So many would go out and do Nagar Sankirtan, Harigam Sankirtan, in the middle of winter in the northern states in the US. Now, I don't know, imagine going to the foothills of the Himalayas for eight hours a day with a charter and no shoes and dancing up and down and playing the Ganga and chanting Hare Krishna. He inspired this in his disciples. How is this possible? I'm remembering now, Srila Gurudev was saying how when Prabhupada came back to India, Prabhupada was saying, oh. He said, I was in the park, I was chanting, and my eyes were closed. And when I opened my eyes, I saw that all of these worms were coming out of the stool. He said, normally worms go toward the stool, but now they're coming out of the stool. And they're becoming devotees, and they began dancing and chanting Hare Krishna. How is this possible? Srila Gurudev remembers Prabhupada saying this to him. Srila Prabhupada was very uncompromising and very dedicated, but he was willing to adjust according to time, place, and circumstance so that he could inject the essence. Srila Gurudev said that before Prabhupada went to the US, Srila Prabhupada told him that if I have to make a hostel, and even if I have to serve meat and alcohol and all this so that people will come to hear the message of Krishna, I will do so because I have the faith that by chanting Hari Nam, by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, very soon they will give up all of these things, insignificant things, and they will take to the path of Krishna Bhakti. This was his faith. And also, Sukhsa Thakur said something very similar. When Srimad Prabhupada first, when he was on the boat, Jaladuta, he was writing this poem. Actually, it's his bhajan. It was a prayer. And he was so enthusiastic. Krishna Dabha Punya Vailai, as Padma read this morning, that in every town and village, Krishna's name will be sung. He understood that this was the 
mission that this Guru Maharaj gave him. He knew it in advance that he was the person who was deputed to bring Mahaprabhu's message to the entire world. There was no doubt about it. You can see it in his activities, in his own words. He knew that he was the one deputed to do that. He didn't know how it would happen, but he had so much faith and conviction. But then when he arrived in Boston Harbor, he saw the nature and the condition of the people in the Western world. He was like, oh no. Oh Krishna, I don't know why you brought me to this place. This terrible place. I don't know why you brought me here, but I must be here for a reason. You want to do something with me. So, you can do whatever you like with me. You can make me successful, or you can make me fail as you like. You're completely free to do whatever you want with me. I know that you have the power to make the impossible possible. So please, it would make me very happy. It would make me very happy if you would help me to serve my Guru Maharaj and you would help me to fulfill this task. I have faith in the words of Srimad Bhagavatam that just by hearing the glories of Krishna, the hearts of the people of this world, even though they are so contaminated, can be changed. Prabhupada is writing this in this. Makile Bhagavat Karma. Guru Kripa Kode Krishna Adhamaya Rukati. And then in the end he says, Oh, you can do whatever you like with me. I am just like a puppet in your hands. So make me dance, make me dance, make me dance as you like. Oh Lord, make me dance as you like. Completely giving up all selfish interests. Not that he had any, but giving up all of this other ideas and only allowing himself to be utilized as a tool for the service of his Guru Maharaj, for the service of Mahaprabhu, and for the service of Sri Sri Ram and Krishna. Many years ago, we were in Shri Keshav Nigoyama. And at that time, Sri Ramana Prabhu, he said that Sri Prabhupada, that time, he used to ask the devotees from Sri Keshav Nigoyama, he was saying in Ramadan Dhamma And every week, he would be giving classes there. And he requested them, please, you have to come at least once a week. And he said, oh, we didn't like to go. Sri Prabhupada said, oh, we didn't like to go. Because he would give a class for two hours in English, and none of us understood English. So they would have to go there because he said because he's our worshipable senior disciple of Sarasvati Thakur, so we had to go. We had to honor and sit there for two hours, and we didn't understand one word. We didn't realize what he was doing, what he was preparing, but he was preparing something. His whole life, Prabhupada said, from the moment he met his Guru Maharaj, from that moment. His whole life was a preparation for this service. Everything that he was doing. I remember Srila Gurudev told Sudhani something. He said, actually, real initiation happens when Guru first glances at disciple. He said, everything else is just formality. But as you remember from Prabhupada, Prabhupada said this morning, he said from, uh, Prabhupada said, from that very first moment, I accepted him, he accepted me from that first moment. Of course, it's a qualification necessary. The qualification for Guru Srila Prabhupada established in the verse of Bhagavad Gita, Dai Nikesha Gumayi Mahamayan Udhattaya. He says, Well, this material energy is extremely difficult to overcome. He said, A man bound behind his back with both his hands and his feet, he's unable to free himself. Therefore, he requires someone who is liberated to free him. And another bound man cannot unbind another bound man. Someone who is liberated and free. So he himself went to the western countries. When he was on the boat, he was reflecting. He was saying, Oh, today is Gaur Purnima. He said, The devotees in Vrindavan and in Mayapur Navati, they're all relishing and enjoying the festivals. He said, But today, I am alone. I don't have any devotee association. Never mind. I'm not. I have not embarked on this mission for my own personal happiness. I am doing it for the happiness of my Gurudev and for Krishna. He said, even if I have to go to hell, even if I have to go to hell to serve them, then let me go to hell. Sarasvati Thakur established this in Srila Prabhupada and invited this move completely. Srila Sarasvati Thakur was speaking about what is Guru Nishta. And he said, the mood of the disciples should be like this. If I have to become proud, if I have to become a beast, if I have to go to hell to carry out the order of my Gurudev, who is sent by Krishna, then let me sign a contract to go to hell for all eternity. 
Because I know that by a single particle of the dust from this lotus feet, that millions of people in this world can be saved. I will not accept anything that anyone says against my guru. I will punch all conceptions with my fist that are against him. Because I know that he has the word of Krishna. This was his uncompromising mood. Let me sign a pact to go to hell for all eternity if this is what makes him happy. This is the mood of the gopis. Huh? When Krishna's foot dust, sorry, when the gopis had to give their foot dust for Krishna's head, for his headache. They were asked, oh, aren't you afraid to go to hell? No. Hell is when Krishna is not happy. I'm willing to go to hell for all eternity as long as Krishna is happy. I will give my foot dust for Krishna's sake. Prabhupada had this mood in his heart. And he's showing us also, as disciples, how to be disciples. How to actually develop this mood of surrender. This mood of surrender that I will do anything to please my Gurudev. Not maintaining any self-interest. He tells himself completely unqualified. And his mood was like this. I don't have any strength on my own. Everything is due to your mercy, O Gurudev. You can make this happen as you like. And because of this, he fully, fully emptied his heart and accepted fully the conception of his Gurudev. And Krishna himself had to fulfill his desire and the desire of his Gurudev. And we saw an amazing thing. How is it that someone like me can be born into the place of Kali, California. The place of Kali and the place of fornication, the place of illicit sex, intoxication, meeting and gambling, and all sinful activities. Los Angeles, Hollywood, the center of sin. I can be born into that situation in the US and the first morning of life spent in Mangalarti. How is that possible? By His mercy. By His mercy. And he brought this Hare Krishna all over the world. Some people are saying, oh, he only brought Hare Krishna or he only brought ABCs. That is only ignorance. If we actually study and read, and Mahabharata unlocks, you see how Chaitanya Charitamrita is there? Everything is in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Everything is in Srimad Bhagavatam. If your devotee speaks one word, hello, or how are you, can they not infuse Prima Bhakti into our hearts? Saraswati Thakur traveling around, Vrindavan speaking on the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Some might say, oh, that is so dry. But truly,